Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Peter Diamandis. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. It's uh, an honor and a pleasure to be here in this beautiful facility. Uh, and, and Doug, you know, the last time you and I had this kind of an interaction was really 16 years ago when uh, I was under the arch in St. Louis, and here we are launching the X Prize. And you have to remember that uh, here we were launching this vision of private space flight when that was not the norm. And we had a lot of doubters, a lot of people who said it was impossible. But 16 years later, there are thousands of people who are buying tickets and billions of dollars being invested. And now any one of us can buy a ticket to go to space. I have two. Um, so my dream for space has been driven by this vision that I want to go and I want to enable others to go with me. And part of it is really the spirit of extraordinary writers and artists like Heinlein and Clark and Bonestell who envisioned what the future would look like. And since my early teenage years, I've wanted to be an asteroid miner. I always viewed it as a glamorous vision of where we could go. And ultimately, my passion about opening up space, and I know that of my colleagues, uh, makes that vision of asteroid mining not only reality, but something that we need to do. So today, I am very proud, along with my colleagues here on stage, to be announcing planetary resources. Uh, the vision of planetary resources is to make the resources of space available to humanity, both in space and here on Earth. Whether it's propellant from water on asteroids or strategic metals and minerals that are, uh, are important to promoting and creating a world of abundance here on Earth. So as, uh, as Doug mentioned, I have the pleasure of having written a book called Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think. We hit number one on Amazon. We're nine weeks on the New York Times list. And the book was a response of saying, you know, it's time to stop all this negative thinking. We are living into a world where individuals and small teams have the ability to do incredible things. Scarcity which has been the model of the past, is contextual. And technology is an abundance-liberating force. And whether it's uh, abundance on metals and minerals and energy and real estate, these are the things in near infinite quantities in space. And when I think about transforming that which is scarce to that which is abundant, I use the analogy of, say, an orange tree in my backyard. If all of a sudden I've plucked all of the oranges from the lowest hanging branches, Orange is going, all of a sudden becomes scarce until I develop a technology as simple as a ladder that allows me to reach higher, and now oranges are abundant. For us, when we think about scarce metals, minerals, and such, as we move beyond the bounds of Earth to a solar system that is full of resources, we can bring those back to humanity. So some historical context, if you would. Let's move this forward. Uh, if you think about what has driven human exploration over time, it really has been the search for natural resources, whether it's the exploration for 500 to 1,000 years ago from China, or the Europeans heading to the Americas in search of gold and spices, or the American settlers moving to the West in search of timber, land, gold, oil. These are the things that have driven us over the long term. So it is no surprise that now as we move into space, these are the things driving us today. We're going from a species that used to use only resources within a day's walk to a species that has access to resources on our planet to a species now that has access to the resources in our solar system. So why is this the right time? Well, there are five critical elements I want to mention to you. Number one, we're living into a day and age where exponentially growing technologies are enabling small teams of individuals to literally do what only governments and large corporations have done before. They're buying down the cost of electronics, of AI, of robotics, that will enable for very small, very powerful, low-cost, low-power spacecraft. These are essentially the kinds of technologies that at Singularity University uh, we study today. The second is the availability of commercial space launch. It's finally arrived. 
Multiple companies like SpaceX and Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin and Paul Allen with the Straddle Launcher have invested and committed billions of dollars. These also demonstrate the ability of small private teams to do things that were only once in the realm of governments. The third powerful force are a new generation of risk-tolerant investors. So Eric's going to speak about our investors um, and who they are and why they're involved. But we're also seeing a new generation of centimillionaires and billionaires who are now investing in space. There are people like Elon and Jeff and Paul, who I mentioned, and Richard Branson in the, in the, uh, in the launch industry. There are the dozens of extraordinary private individuals who are investing in the Google Lunar X Prize teams that are going to the moon. Um, this is smart money investing in one of the largest commercial opportunities ever, going to space to gain resources for the benefit of humanity. The Earth is feeling a resource pinch. And ultimately, we have the ability to turn that which is scarce into abundant. And so now is the time that we need it most. Finally, we are living uh, during a time when we are directly in line with NASA's uh, policy. Uh, NASA's goal of extending human presence in space, of going back to the moon and Mars, and partnering with private companies to do things such as what Planetary Resources go is planning to do, to help extend, uh, extend human presence in space. So I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about how Planetary Resources got started. Uh, Eric and I have been business partners for over 16 years. Uh, we co-founded Space Adventures together. Uh, Eric was a, a part of the early team at Zero G and X Prize, and we've always shared the dream of, of opening up space. And it was a little over three years ago where we had a meeting and we sat down and said, what's next? Commercial private space flight has been great. It's working. We have thousands of people now buying tickets to go to space. But what's next? What's going to drive us beyond? And both of us found a passion for going to really hook our, if you would, our engine uh, of opening up space uh, to gaining access to the resources. This is the engine that will expand the economic sphere of influence beyond low Earth orbit, beyond geostationary orbit, uh, to gain the resources of, of space. So people ask, can it really be done? How difficult is it? Let me say it can be done, and yes, it's very difficult. There's no question. We're talking about something which is extraordinarily difficult, but the returns economically and of benefit to humanity are extraordinary. So when I think about a proof case of what makes this possible, why do I believe this is doable? You know, recently at XPRIZE, we created a partnership with Shell to help underwrite our exploration of space. Um, as I think about what Shell and the other exploration companies have done, they've literally created robotic cities on the bottom of the ocean, five, 10,000 feet below the ocean surface, fully robotic cities that then mine five to 10,000 feet down below the ocean floor to gain access to oil. These are commitments of five to $50 billion in each of these, these platforms. It's extraordinary what humanity can now do. For me, that kind of work makes going to the asteroids to extract resources look easy. So, in conclusion, as we look towards space for these resources, we really take a page from the playbook that's been used by humanity century after century, millennia after millennia, to go looking for these resources to help expand humanity's footprint into space. Uh, we're implementing the vision of great writers and thinkers like Tsiolkovsky, Heinlein, Clark, and academics and visionaries like John Lewis, whose seminal book, Mining the Sky, helped set our vision. So I am very proud to be here on stage today announcing this company. And I'd like really, at this point, to uh, introduce one of my closest friends, an extraordinary business partner, Eric Anderson. Eric and I have known each other for 16 years. Um, he is the co-founder and chairman of Space Adventures. And I really want people to realize the extraordinary work he did there. He has gone out and privately sold over a half a billion dollars of human spaceflight missions as part of that company, an extraordinary feat. He is the CEO of Intentional, a company headquartered here in, Saint, in Seattle, uh, which is a pioneer in the future of software, where he's working with uh, his partner in the Microsoft and Microsoft chief architect, and of course, planetary resources investor, 
Charles Simone. Finally, along with me, he is a proud co-founder and co-chairman of Planetary Resources, 